empowering children, knowing that at the end of the day, you've made an impact in their lives. Uh, it's a different world. And I think that children really struggle today. Uh, and so I like to believe that um, at my age, I have, uh, this, this is one of those professions where I think really you're never too old. Uh, you can always make an impact. And um, I have been blessed to work with people from ages uh, 4 to 105. And so I think uh, that brings with it a, a set of skills and wisdom that can be enlightening for children. And I've also, uh, you know, I've also transitioned with them as they transitioned and as our society has transitioned. So I get them. Why knowledge matters. Welcome to a new episode here on Why Knowledge Matter. I'm your host, Yannick, and now joining me, Corinne Isaacs, the author of Be Proud You Are Canadian. Welcome, Corinne. I'm so excited to have you on the show and talk about your book, Be Proud You Are Canadian. Sounds really interesting, and I can't really wait to hear about you and really the process while writing the book. So first question, what made you write the book in the first place, Corey? Well, I was born in Canada and I spent 40 years in the States. And after living in the States and traveling abroad, I realized uh, that not too many people knew too much about Canada generally. And so I wanted to educate uh, not only our own children, but children from other parts of the world about what is so great about being born Canadian. What was the most difficult part to writing the book? I would say um, the layout of the book, Yannick. Uh, uh, my photographer had all the children meet at the multicultural center and uh, she took pictures of them all. And one of the things that she asked me because the children were excited was, would I be able to include all the children in the book? And so naturally that was a bit of a challenge because the book wasn't yet written. But when I had put all the pictures of the children out on the floor, it dictated the layout of the book. So that worked out perfectly. I guess the other thing too, is that it was published through Freeson Press in Vancouver. And we all think that uh, our original work is unique. And so I had to go through an editing process with them. And that was a little tough because I had to make some changes to the book. So how long did it take you, roughly speaking, really from the very onset when you had the idea of writing a children's book to publishing the book ultimately? Well, um, that it was a very long process because I wrote the book initially and then I kept editing it and I finally had it published. Um, it was my COVID project. I had it published during COVID. That's so interesting. So what do you think made you write a book such as this during COVID? I mean, you might have, you know, um, faced a lot of challenges, you know, just the distress in itself. Um, well, I, I, living in the States, I really missed Canada. And uh, I just, when I came back to Canada, I taught at St. Clair College. And I just, just before COVID, and I realized again that uh, our own children, you know, didn't know what was so great about being born in Canada. So um, I thought I would write the book. And the book is, uh, it's, it's, it's based on, you know, what is unique about Canada. We're a collective society, uh, which is unique. We follow Europe's collective society. Uh, you know, we're open to diversity. We have managed health care. Um, and then the book talks about uh, Canada, the notion that Canada has been peacekeepers throughout the world historically. And it talks about uh, the inventions that we've had and the contributions to the world. And then at the end of the book, it uh, asks the children, it's an interactive book. And it says, you know, now that you know all these great things about Canada, uh, what do you think is great about Canada? So it's a thought provoking book for the kids as well. 
that sounds really positive and I like your positive outlook on Canada. I think that's also something which always, um, you know, is important that we look at the positive. We always can look at the negative, of course, too. And every country has, you know, its history um, mm-hmm. with, you know, in different uh, areas, of course. But also I want to go a little bit more personal in when it comes to your background, because your background really is basically a good example of really what Canada is like. Thank you. <laughs> so um, uh, after living back and forth in two societies, uh, I just, uh, I was really motivated to write the book because um, in many ways, I feel like Canada has always been there for the world to the best of their ability. And sometimes I think uh, we go uh, unnoticed, uh, you know, that uh, our contributions aren't necessarily focused on. And so my patriotism and my loyalty um, to the society was what ultimately decided me to write or helped me decide to write the book. What is your favorite chapter in the book and why is it your favorite chapter if you have one at all? Well, it's not a chapter book, it's a pictorial. And um, I I like, there are different pages in particular I really like. Um, I like the notion where it talks about we're very open to diversity. It also, um, you know, I have dual citizenship, I'm US and Canadian. And um, I try to compare it fairly to the individualistic society in the U.S. And um, certainly didn't mean to offend anybody, but it just kind of has a comparison of the two. The U.S. is in an individualistic society. We are a collective. And I didn't really even understand the depth of that until I took a social psychology uh, course at Wayne State University. And that's when... Um, I realized that after living uh, close to 40 years in the U.S. that, uh, you know, I, my beliefs were strongly Canadian. And in spite of living in the U.S. for 40 years, I had a hard time understanding why I didn't quite feel at home. And then I took a social psychology class, had a brief discussion with my professor. And he said, you know, where were you born? I said, Canada. And he said, well, you're never going to quite feel Um, at home in the U.S. because uh, your core beliefs and values are Canadian and they're different from the U.S. So that was super enlightening. It was like a light bulb went on and uh, it made me want to, it motivated me to write the book. That is really interesting. So you really basically, while living in the U.S., you, you ultimately enrolled in a psychology class and then you figured out, you know, why you don't feel necessarily as attuned to this society as, you know, you might think of someone living 40 years in the States. But still, it's interesting because you really, you feel like home too in the U.S. I mean, you're really talking to you in person, in private. I can really tell that you're highly influenced, you know, you know, in a, in, in U.S. society, in that it is very direct. So you're very direct straightforward person you know whereas canadians are more indirect so it's a really indirect culture here so that's really interesting actually to learn you know that because i can't really feel that uh, you don't uh, feel 100 percent at home for example in the u.s because it comes almost across differently because you feel like i feel like you're very very uh, american you know the way you are that's funny you mentioned that because uh after I came home in 2018, and uh, I my two-year plan turned into a five-year plan because of COVID, and I would say uh, that assessment is spot on uh, after living uh, 40 years in the U.S. Now I almost feel like uh, too Americanized to stay in Canada, so uh, it's, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting uh, journey uh, being back and forth between two countries constantly. And naturally, after 40 years, I built some very strong relationships over there. And, um, you know, COVID threw a wrench into everybody's plans with the bridge closed. And so I went, uh, you know, two years without being able to 
see the, you know people that were um, you know that I that I held close. So yeah, you 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 make a very valid point about the the directness and the indirectness and the difference between Americans and Canadians. Definitely. What are you most proud of when it comes to your book? Um, that I stuck with it. Uh, the other thing is that I included all the local children from Windsor. And um, one thing I work, you know, my specialty is working with children, youth, at-risk youth, and I'm very child-centered. And so when it came time to print the original uh, mock-up of the book, rather than go to a printer, I, uh, at the time I was teaching at St. Clair College, and so I'm all about investment in children and students. So rather than go to a, uh, a printer and spend an exorbitant amount of money, um, I went to the printing department at St. Clair College, which was student run and which ultimately would engage the students um, more so than you know, paying um, a printing shop. So it was uh, it was an investment in the students at St. Clair College as well. That's wonderful. Gordon, I'm so happy really to have you here on the show. I think you have so much to give and I have you also witnessed how you are with children, you know, with uh, with little children and, and, and all the children. So you're really wonderful and it's uh, such a blessing to have you here. Now, what made you, generally speaking, to become a writer? Was this a straightforward process that you always felt like you love to articulate your thoughts in writing? Or what was it that made you ultimately become a writer? Because you write a lot. Interesting question. Um, so the first half of my life, I was a paralegal. I worked with um, some amazing mentors. And then I decided to go into the field of psychology. And uh, I worked for uh, an agency in Macomb County, and they asked me to write and uh, facilitate a children's divorce support group. And um, so I did that. It, got, it was awarded a three-year grant. Um, I learned through facilitating those divorce groups that uh, a lot of Americans did not have the finances for resources that they needed, such as counseling, and uh, which the families really need as they go through divorce. So uh, one day I went into work at the law firm, and I was a little bit down. And the attorney said to me, uh, "Kareem, you seem down today. What's you know what's going on?" And I said, "Well, you know, I'm facilitating these groups, and I've come to realize that um, a lot of these individuals just don't have the finances to um, you know seek out these resources." And so he was an incredible mentor. And he said, well, he said, you write uh, motions and briefs for me and you're a very good writer. He said, so uh, the pen is mightier than the sword, Corrine. Why don't you get out there and start writing uh, divorce related articles and provide resources within the articles for people to uh, access. So that's how I started writing. And then ultimately it became a passion of yourself did you find like uh, you know with ease i mean there is one thing writing you know work related and it's a whole other challenge to actually write a book yeah i'm i'm an, i started out as an expository writer which is an educational writer and i wrote a lot about mental health i published three books uh, self help books and as i'm sure you can imagine um, over time, uh, that gets, uh, you know, uh, a little burdensome. And so one of the things uh, that you should always be able to do is to be diverse in your writing. So I switched from mental health and I started writing uh, different types of articles, more creative writing. And, um, and, and, and I just kind of pulled away from the expository and went more so into the eclectic or the creative uh, writing. Doreen, what makes you feel alive? Working with children, um, empowering children, knowing that at the end of the day, you've made an impact in their lives. Uh, it's a different world. 
And I think that children really struggle today. Uh, and so I like to believe that um, at my age, I have, uh, this, this is one of those professions where I think really you're never too old. Uh, you can always make an impact. And um, I have been blessed to work with people from ages uh, 4 to 105. And so I think uh, that brings with it a, a set of skills and wisdom that can be enlightening for children. And I've also, uh, you know, I've also transitioned with them as they transition and as our society has transitioned. So I get them, I get them. What impact do you wish this book has on children? Well, I hope to educate our own children about what's so great about um, being born in Canada, what's so great about being Canadian. Um, learning not to, you know, just take for granted that. Uh, the book I was, I'm hoping as well, that um, for those families that may be moving to Canada, um, relocating and they don't really know about the Canadian society, that the, the book provides both children and parents an insight in, as to what they can expect when they come into Canada. Corey Nizak, such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you Thank so you. much. That's why knowledge matters.